sing of Mary, pure and lowly, Virgin Mother undefiled. Sing of God's own Son, most holy, who became a little child. Fairest child of fairest mother, God the Lord who came to earth, word made flesh of every brother, takes our nature by his birth. Good morning. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As we come together on this Saturday morning, the Church celebrates the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a heart that was pierced with sorrow. And so, as we begin our celebration today, we call to mind our sorrows. We join them with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We ask for the gift of courage, a gift of the Holy Spirit. For any wrongdoing, we ask the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And from the Blessed Virgin, praying for us in heaven, we ask also for consolation. Lord Jesus, you are the consolation of the truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who prepared a fit dwelling place for the Holy Spirit in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, graciously grant that through her intercession we may be a worthy temple of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Chronicles. After the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and paid homage to King Johash, and the king then listened to them. They forsook the temple of the Lord, the God of their fathers, and began to serve the sacred poles and the idols. And because of this crime of theirs, wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem. Although prophets were sent to them to convert them to the Lord, the people would not listen to their warnings. Then the Spirit of God possessed Zechariah, son of Jehoiada, the priest. He took his stand above the people and said to them, God says, why are you transgressing the Lord's commands so that you cannot prosper? Because you have abandoned the Lord, he has abandoned you. But they conspired against him and at the king's order, they stoned him to death in the court of the Lord's temple. Thus King Johash was unmindful of the devotion shown him by Jehoiada, Zechariah's father, and slew his son. And as Zechariah was dying, he said, May the Lord see and avenge. At the turn of the year, the force of Arameans came up against Johash, they invaded Judah and Jerusalem, did away with all the princes of the people, and sent all their spoil to the king of Damascus. Though the Aramean force came with few men, the Lord surrendered a very large force into their power because Judah had abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers. So punishment was meted out to Johash. As the Arameans had departed from him, leaving him in grievous suffering. His servants conspired against him because of the murder of the son of Jehoiada, the priest. He was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. The word of the Lord.
toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. I will make his posterity endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. If his sons forsake my law and walk not according to my ordinances, if they violate my statutes and keep not my commands, I will punish their crime with a rod and their guilt with stripes. Yet my mercy I will not take from him, nor will I belie my faithfulness. Forever I will maintain my love for my soul. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looking for him among the, their relatives and acquaintances, they did not find him. They returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them, and his mother kept all these things in her heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We come together today to end our week on Saturday, and we end it this week by reflecting on the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Of the many things that could be said about the Heart of Mary, the one thing that seemed to come to my mind over and over as I was saying my prayers was that pondering in her heart the willing of the Blessed Virgin Mary to think and to reflect and to pray over the events in her life as they unfolded, the events of her son's life as they unfolded. Remember, we know now more than Mary knew as things happened. She wasn't a foreseer. She had to go with it as it happened. And in doing so, she trusted in the Lord. In our north window here at St. Peter's Church, there's the conversion of Brian Baru by St. Patrick, and down below it, 
on the lower half of the window is the Sacred Heart of Jesus to the left and the Immaculate Heart of Mary pierced with a sword to the right. As you go through the church, no matter how you enter, that window is center on the north wall so that the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of our Lord Jesus Christ are with us from the moment we enter until the moment we leave. How is your heart? How is my heart? As far as pondering, do we reflect? Do we take time in the busy world to simply stop without the radio, without the television, without the cell phone? Just stop. And number one, think. And number two, pray over the many things that go on in our lives. What a wonderful opportunity for a renewal of prayer time in our day, even if it's just five or ten minutes, to view what's going on in our life, to give it to the Lord, to ponder what it may mean, and to follow the Lord's call as he guides us. And let us pray. For Pope Francis, bishops and priests, that they will be good examples for the faithful to keep their baptismal promises. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For cooperation between nations, for the common good of all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the protection of children who are missing and for children who have run away, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the protection of our own military and police, we pray to the Lord. And for the intentions that are found in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for the intentions of our area parishes, the intentions for which this morning's Mass is being offered from St. John the Baptist and Transfiguration Parish, from here at St. Mary's and St. Peter's Parish, as well as St. Paul's and St. Joseph's Parish. And we also remember the prayers and the intentions of the parishioners in Holland Patton at St. Leo's, in Taborg at St. Patrick's, and out in Camden at St. John the Evangelist. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. Almighty God, we place these petitions at the foot of your altar today as we gather to celebrate your divine love. We ask that you hear these prayers through the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And if it be your will, we ask that you answer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's turn in the singing of number 686, Holy is His Name, number 686. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior, for he has looked with mercy on my My name will be forever exalted. For the mighty God has done great things for me, and his mercy will reach from me.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your countenance. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, and with all the blessed apostles and saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your Son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our sending song today is number 293 in the Missalat. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above. Oh, Maria. Hail, Queen of mercy and of love. Seraphim, heaven and earth resound the 
Jesus.